Thank you so much, guys. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here and to present uh, our uh, take and solution and how we had used blockchain into the um, in medical industry. Um, as you can see from the title of the presentation, we are talking about building a borderless health society. As we all know, actually, what's happening in the healthcare, like uh, healthcare is so expensive in any country and it takes a huge percentage of GDP of any country. And according to this uh, graph, as you can see in front of you, the UK has been spending nearly 10% of that till 2016. And throwing more money into healthcare is not going to solve the problem. We have actually to dive a little bit more into these problems and understand what's happening and how can we tackle them. And luckily, we are living in a very modern uh, age where the technology is available, and we believe there is always a solution, not just money. Luckily, doctors are still very trusted individuals in the society, and we need to work with them to understand these issues they currently face in the healthcare. And one of the major issues that doctors are facing is the medical errors they are intentionally and intentionally is caused. And that because of the data. The data of the medical is actually so fragmented, uh, medical records. And as you can see, according to this, Johns Hopkins, they, they, according to their research, showing that is the medical error is now third leading cause of death in the United States, which is quite high after the health, heart diseases and cancer. But when we start talking here about medical errors, we, we have to focus on the data. And when we come to talk about data, we cannot ignore the fact of the security and fraud. Security, and everyone I'm sure saw this article um, where security breach for fear over 26 million NHS patients happening actually a um, few years ago. And at the same time, everyone remembers this one happens two years ago, around May 2017, when there was actually a massive uh, ransom cyber attack happened on the NHS uh, network. Not just security is a problem here. We are talking about your data storage, where you are physically storing this data. Because this is another issue. NHS misplaced 700 pieces of medical documents because it was stored on CD or flash memory and somebody left it on the, uh, on the tube in the underground. Then this is a huge issue. And why actually the medical record is very valuable? Because this is your history. You cannot change it. This is who you are. It's not like uh, your credit card, if it's been stolen, then simply you can ring your bank and you can tell them about the card is missing and they will issue a new one for you. But with your medical record, it's very difficult. This is who you are, this is your past. And as we are sitting all today in this room, we don't know where this data is stored and we don't know who's accessing this data, which is when you talk to any doctor or any, uh, when you go, you say, oh, I'm just accessing your medical record, and they refer to your medical record, but actually you don't know where's that record. Okay, you say it's my medical record, but where it is? I can't see it, I don't have it. And I'm gonna here show, everyone knows uh, Richard Hammond, Top Gear, not, any, not Top Gear anymore, actually Grand Tour, when he had an accident, um, I believe 10 years ago, or sorry, more than that, in 2006, and he was admitted to one of the hospitals in Leeds, and then suddenly, all his records being leaked all over the news because he's not aware where is that data. Everyone can access his data, and everyone can leak that data. Now we are thinking about what's the solution for these issues that we just mentioned now. The reason, the main reason we, are, we believe is because there are multiple systems that are having access to that data, or they are creating silos of data. And unfortunately, those systems, they don't talk to each other. As you can see, patient is the center of that, but unfortunately, none of those systems are talking to each other. Why is that? Because everyone believes in the priority of their data, and that's how they monetize on the data. But in medical chain, we are trying to change that. We are trying to give the ownership of the data to the patient, and the patient will be in the center of everything. The patient who should be aware who's accessing the data, where is that data stored, and he has the right to access that data whenever he needs it. As we can see in this slide, this is the classic pathway, patient pathway. Family doctor, uh, we always go to the family doctor, but the family doctor now currently he's the center of everything, which shouldn't be the case. What we would like to do, we would like to move to this actually pathway for the patients, where the patient is aware of everything around him. 
But what's the current, what we have currently is this kind of silos. Each one of those is representing maybe a GP, maybe a software vendor, or insurance companies where they hold all this data. And we believe the solution is to move from the centralized to distributed. And when we talk about distributed here, there is a big uh, terminology comes to our mind. Is recently everyone talking about it, is the blockchain. Then if we look at this very simple definition of blockchain, what is it? It's a distributed decentralized ledger based on a cryptography that improves equality, transparency, robustness, and trust. The trust is a very important element here when we talk about medical records. Then how does it work? Basically, blocks of information are added piece by piece to form a chain. And then that chain will be structured, uh, shared across multiple holders, which we call them nodes. Then if any information changed in these blocks, then the other nodes, they will identify it and they will reject it. And this is a very simple graph showing you what do we mean by blockchain. Now, currently, this is the existing traditional servers, which basically servers stored somewhere on, in, a, in, in a one hospital or data center. But we have to move to this kind of structure, decentralized, where all these nodes, actually, they hold the same data. And as you can see here, if one of those data is being changed, flagged, the other nodes, they will reject it. And that's how you build the trust for that data. I would like to mention earlier Mike uh, from Gartner where they have, uh, he talks about a lot about the hype cycle. In 2018, Gartner actually, they mentioned the hype cycle for the blockchain is literally at the peak of inflated expectations. And we, the more that companies are startups or any, uh, and yeah, companies, they will adopt a blockchain. We believe this actually will move slowly into the scope of alignment. And we believe this is coming very in near future. We started actually uh, two years ago, and we feel more companies are now coming into this kind of uh, uh, blockchain, and hopefully slowly and surely we will be in that part of the hype. But the blockchain is not always the answer for everything. We have, before we decided to go to blockchain, we went actually through this kind of a simple decision tree. We have to ask ourselves a few questions before we think is the blockchain the solution for all these problems. And I'm not going to go through this in details, but just to give you an idea how you should think about blockchain. Then when we talk about actually medical record, we need a database where we store that record. Then we ask ourselves first, can traditional database technology meet our, our needs, what we need to achieve? If we say yes, then straight away we, we say no, no, we don't need a blockchain. However, it's not as simple as that. Because that data, actually, it has more than one participant. It's not one individual who's entering that data into that database. And then again, you ask yourself, who should update that database? And according to that decision tree, we realize that we need, actually, permissioned blockchain network to achieve that. Now, this is a, just a brief uh, idea about how we decided to choose a blockchain to solve most of the issues that we just uh, discussed earlier. However, nothing comes without any challenges. And for that, I would like to welcome my colleague, Dave, who will talk a little bit about the challenges that we face so far. Please, Dave. Hello, everybody. So just a little bit about my personal journey into this challenge. Um, I've worked in IT uh, since leaving university. Well, actually had a couple of years in psychiatric health after leaving university, then went off as a programmer, IT management, working mainly in financial services. But in 2003, I had the opportunity to go and work as the head of IT at the Salford Royal Hospital Trust and had a really interesting three years there with the national program going on and all the rest. But I recognized this fundamental issue or challenge of the fragmentation of data and the importance of data in health and the complexities of that data. I went back into the insurance world in 2006, but this issue kind of remained in my mind in a strange way. And three years ago, I'd finally reached the point I'd kind of done my time in the corporate world and I could go off and do what interested me. And I decided what interested me 
was this problem, this challenge, and how it would be solved. So I spent a few months kind of doing a really deep read. I thought, over 10 years, maybe it's been solved. But actually, no, it hadn't. Um, interesting things had happened in the meantime. There were a quarter of a million apps out in the App Store, most of which were unintegrated, and an awful number of which were, um, had incompatible data structures. So in one sense, there's more IT, but the problem was even larger with respect to interoperability and integration. But one thing that really inspired me in my deep read was the words of Bob Vashta. He's, uh, he's a US medic who, I think he came over five or six years ago to help the NHS figure out where do we go next. And he left a lot of good things, like the GDEs we've heard about, CCIOs as a concept. But what I, I really liked about what he said, and it's almost a principle that I carry with me, was this idea of the single digital patient-centered health record that combines clinician-generated notes and data with patient-generated information and preference. And the locus of control is the patient, and that is truly radical. Because understandably, the institutions are operationally focused. They see a whole lot of patients for very small moments of time. But actually, what is the one thing that unifies the data? It's the patient. So the other interesting thing that had happened was that standards had emerged. And it was clear that FHIR had um, really significant uptake internationally in the UK in the US with the Arcanaut project, et cetera, et cetera. Even the EHR vendors were jumping onto fire and saying, we'll offer you a fire wrapper. Um, also, interestingly, I, I was at a conference hosted, it was at Google DeepMind, and Ian spoke, this was about three years ago, and I heard about this thing called Open EHR or Open Air. I thought, yeah, that kind of makes sense, because fire is all about moving data to and fro. It's not about persisting data. You need a semantic layer and a technical layer, all that good stuff that we heard about earlier on. So I was starting to feel quite intrigued, really, by this. I started working up a proof of concept and tried to get some funding unsuccessfully. And then I met Medical Chain. Oh, oh the other thing I discovered was blockchain and distributed ledger. And I felt that that had a lot of potential to flip this focus from institutional onto patient. And then I came across Medical Chain. We had a conversation. They were doing the same thing. Unlike me, they were funded. So it just made sense to um, actually jump onto their team. And, and we started actually building around this concept. Now, um, it's very important as a startup, understand your use case. And the diagram here is, if you like, the very large picture of the use case with applications on the left, including telemedicine that we've implemented as a pilot, uh, with the data platform in the center and the GP system data flowing in at the bottom, hospital EHR our data flowing in, the blockchain having its role. And the secondary use is there. Once you have a semantic level of information, you have the potential to analyze across very large populations of data. And you can only do that in a meaningful sense if you have a semantic layer which has some clinical meaning around it. So this made sense. Okay, I, I think I did this diagram 18 months, nearly two years ago now. But of course, the next, if you like, challenge is how do we build around this? And, um, oops, let me go back one. All right. And this is, this is where we're up to. I'll highlight three or four aspects of the diagram. One of the beauties of being a startup these days is you don't have to buy any kit. I mean, Amazon Web Services is incredible in terms of the breadth of functionality it offers, and you can spin up processes and servers at will. It has a very wide range of key management technologies and things like that. So it's a no-brainer uh, to actually build on cloud. And um, you know, for us, we landed on AWS. Azure would be an equally credible offering for that. Um, at, the, at the top, going along the diagram, we have the blockchain element, which I won't go into in detail. But 
One interesting thing there, we started, um, all the frameworks are open source, which is great, and indeed, everything we're using on that slide is fundamentally open source, which I think is very important for the health organizations that we hope to work and partner with. Um, so we started, started using Hyperledger Fabric, and we had to pivot onto Enterprise Ethereum three or four months ago. So typical startup, yeah, trying one thing. Nobody's ever really done this before. You have to switch horses. But I think probably more interesting for today is the open EHR bit in the middle, where it was clear the blockchain had its role for identity, uh, permissioning, and audit, but it was not the place to put the health data onto. That would be off-chain, and open EHR was an obvious approach. So we decided, um, we decided to partner with Moran, uh, and we worked with Better. Um, over, the, over the past year, had some invaluable input from their team in developing templates and so on, working with EMIS data, et cetera, et cetera. We have adopted the interopen, uh, um, interopen fire profiles. Those are standard now in the UK, so we've jumped onto that standard, um, and we're doing the mapping onto those with a fire wrapper and then through into open EHR at the back. Uh, we are very well advanced with EMIS integration uh, for GP systems, and TPP has sprung into life over the last couple of months, and, and we're now working with their data. Um, all scripts and the hospital EHR is a little bit further down the road, but again, they're offering fire wrappers, so the opportunity is there. And if you have the open air, open air structure, then you have the opportunity for analysis to use the archetype query language to actually scan across that data and feed the secondary uses. My view, 18 months into this build, is it's looking pretty good. There may be other pivots we need to do, but for me, it's making sense. And as we go to the next stage of looking for partners to get this out into, um, into the field, into hospitals, into care provider organizations, and importantly, out there with patients. Thank you so much, Dave. And as Dave explained to you, this is actually looks very good for people who they understand what we are talking about from the medical industry or from the technology background. However, for the consumer, we have to come up with a, a kind of an application to uh, put all that technology together, and the, it will be very seamless experience for the patient or the consumer market. And that's why we came up with a product, we call it myclinic.com. It's an application will be available in January time, 2020, um, for the consumer, where we are allowing the patient or the consumer to sign up on that platform and will book for all, any health service that he would like to, and he might even be able to book with his own GP. And then all that data, as just Dave mentioned, flowing from EMIS, TPP, et cetera, then all the doctors who they book with, they will have actually visibility to that record. Uh, it will be kind of like once you do the booking with the doctor and you pay, or if it's NHS, it will be free, then you will give a consent for that doctor to access your record. He will be able to, he or she will view all your data, and once the consultation finishes and they submit the report, the access will be revoked. And these are some of the screens that we have from the application. Uh, it will be available um, in January, as I just mentioned earlier. And as well as we, are, we believe our technology will be used in emergency as we are working with some of a wearable manufacturer and we would like as well to harvest some data from the existing wearable devices. All that will be stored in open EHR and will be protected by the blockchain layer on top of that. Thank you so much and please join us if you would like to. Thank you on this journey. <laughs> Thanks very much, both. Thank you. And we have time for just, I think, for one question. Anybody has a question? Yes, sir. We have one here. Uh, thank you, Wael and Dave, uh, for thank this uh, presentation. My question is about the blockchain and uh, how do you uh, overcome all the problem of the costing of blockchain? Because it's not for free when you do the, especially the blockchain. Uh, uh, Hashing, it costs you 
uh, time powerful servers. And that could be a problem in the future when you have a more millions of records. And that's, if you do it in the UK, that could be an issue. So how, how, how have you considered that in your uh, product? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to answer part of it, and the second part I will hand it to Dave. Uh, if you, we talk about now, at the moment, we are a very well-funded uh, startup company. We did our ICO. We raised quite a good enough uh, amount, of, substantial amount of money. And we, we are able. But as I agree with you, once we scale it, actually, then maybe it will be cost. And here where we are inviting, actually, universities, hospitals, non-profit organization, where they can host some of the nodes with us, and there where the data will be stored on that. When I say, actually, data, let's put it again, very clear term. Most of the health data will be off-chain, and we just need the blockchain for the identification and the protection for, for that. And um, uh, that's actually the strategy that we have. Um, Dave, do you would like to add something else? Yeah, so the distributed ledger, the blockchain, will be um, in the nodes. And as Wael says, uh, the actual clinical data will be, at this stage, will be centrally stored, albeit with a high level of resilience in, in the cloud. Over time, that may also distribute, but that's a good bit further down the road. Um, there's obviously cost in doing that, but Having a cloud-based, now that the cloud is mature for information governance, all the good things, having a cloud-based should lead to great economies of scale. Yep. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.